Good afternoon, Scott Relative to be live. Welcome to today's recap. It is Tuesday. Fed started their two-day meeting. Tomorrow we get to hear what's cooking in the economy, when's liftoff, how fast it's going to be, and I don't think it's going to change much in the market for now. But at least there are things to do, and as traders, that's all you can look for, is a plan and things to do. Yesterday, market was down 10, 12 handles. Um, came off the lows. We put a pivot in at 2,072 in the S&P. Today, 6.30 in the morning, we were flirting with that level. Futures came off the lows, and you had some support to trade against. As the day developed, there were some signals that perhaps we could get some kind of rally. You know, you had Europe that was negative go from red to green, and then by 11.30, closed positive, giving you some clues that maybe we can get a little push into the afternoon, and you had some participation. No real momentum, no crazy action, but again, things to do. It's June. We're not in a roaring market. We're in like a bear market for follow through both ways. So when that's the case, you pick and choose some trades and you go with it. You look at the chart here of the SPX, you will see, um, you know, what do we have here? We have a semi double bottom, right? This was your double bottom that I wrote about in my red laurel access note where this was last Tuesday's low of 2072. This was yesterday, 2072. What a coinky dink. And then today we were uh, down at 2072, but opened or you know, retraced higher. And then you had a small little pivot when we went above uh, yesterday's high of 2091. And uh, you had uh, five handles to the upside. So the question is, what's next? Before we get to what's next, you know, this level uh, evened out from support from, I guess, April-ish. So um, the, the, the tale of two tapes is still going on here. You still have this potential, you know, head and shoulders top. Okay, and you also have this descending channel here. Okay, so with that being said, you take a little bit of a closer look to see, you know, what's going on in here. And, um, you know, there's a little bit of room. So with that being said, you know, this morning I'm like, I'm going to be long. I focused on the spiders just because, you know, if we were going to go up, I had some, you know, I had some pivot areas that I figured some shorts would get squeezed and we'd, you know, have a bit of a push and, you know, they wound up working out you know, pretty well. I'm, you know, held the, the spiders all day long from going green to, you know, a few different pivots, which I'll get into next. And, and then on near the close, I got in a, a few different longs, nothing big. You know, we've just think about it on um, last uh, week, we were, um, up Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday and reversed. Then Friday, down six, seven handles. Yesterday, down 10 handles. Today, down 10 handles. So maybe tomorrow, we get a little bit of an up move into the Fed and they push the envelope into, we go back to the chart, this uh, downtrend. So I don't think there's a hell of a lot of room, but the bears could still be in control even if we get up to this 2101 spot. Like this was uh, uh, 2134. This little peak failure was 2121. Last week's peak failure was 2115, so perhaps um, they pushed the envelope into you know 2100 or 2103 or something like that, and that's still just being bearish. Let alone if we push through and you know and, and actually have um, a, a decent move. So um, with that being said, you know there's really there's room to you know it, it's a coin flip. You know we could be down tomorrow or we could be up a little bit into this spot and then need to figure out what's next. So. You know, pick and choose your battle, which way you want to go with it. Um, there's still some decent participation in the bios, in the, in the Russell, and in the financials. Talked about them also in the morning call. Like, if, if those hold up, we're not going to be able to go much lower. If they give way, the bears could get a little louder, and all of them, you know, turned up. There wasn't blockbuster moves, but you look at the IWM, and, um, you know, still hanging out. Actually, no, the IWM had a better move. You know, here was uh, your ascending channel that it's been holding, kind of engulfed the past two days. So this is pretty much a stone throw away from the old high. So the Russell is, is doing well, okay, back above the eight-day moving average. The bios, which have been a leading indicator a lot this year, got very choppy, I guess, just like the market. You know, market's been choppy for the most of, most of the last quarter, and look when the, the bios topped. And now you have this inside range here, which... Um, you know, we held or didn't even get near, to be honest. We talked about 356, and um, here is your channel. So we're still in there, lots of back and forth action, but ultimately, you know, still looks pretty good. You know, it's just sitting there and rebuilding, and, and that some would say that this is like an upper little cup and handle, but I guess we'll see what happens. If you get a big break over this, 
332 to 3 you know 67 30 handles takes you well above this and that means higher prices but we shall see the XLF also what did it do held above the 21 day made a higher low cleared yesterday's high still looks good so those three sectors have been where the relative strength is and then you look at the spiders it has a little bit more room you put it all together and hopefully you know you're putting together a day as far as individual stock action you know in my note I talked about maybe playing Amazon from negative to positive for a push in the lower end of the range if you did so you know you made a little bit of money it doesn't look like a blockbuster move but I think Amazon was up you know what was it three bucks or so today maybe even more so tomorrow if it happens to take this out maybe you get a little bit of a push I'm not saying it's going to be roaring back to the upper end of the range but as an active trader with three and five minute charts or 15 minute charts there's money to be made if you can get another three four dollars tomorrow you know what's this peak this peak is um, 432 so it's five bucks in between there a lot of guys who took home you know Netflix yesterday that they made their day even before the market you know started um, what did Netflix do yesterday pretty much held the trend held above the eight day reversed and closed on highs would have been nice to be able to buy it lower and add more through here but instead it opened up and gave you a move I know I was long it yesterday and I was I was like what's the matter with me why didn't I take this home long um, but I guess I didn't want to have the Netflix risk overnight, which is probably not the smartest thing. I could just adjust my share size and, you know, at least stay with stuff that moves. And this one's been moving. We'll see how it handles tomorrow. Um, Apple's been um, really choppy and not a, a leading indicator, not a lagging indicator, and not even coming up my, my, on my e-signal. I guess they don't want, you know, to you to look at it. <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't be looking at it. But, uh, you know, the, the, the channel here still intact here's the lower end of the channel here's your small little double bottom this too has you know a descending channel here so if it wanted to uh, inch up <laughs> I can, we're playing for inches these days um, into the resistance it's got some room um, it, it you know gave you a quick push came back below then came back above and there's still a little bit of room if it wants the room and we'll see how, you know how that goes tomorrow Facebook really not much you could say here either except for um, you know, kind of in the game um, didn't you know it was definitely choppy also today but still holding this and um, you have some room back into a little bit higher into the range still hugging the moving averages it's it's not even I don't even know what percentage this is you know not even not a huge percentage off the highs it's just out of play and you got to take and pick and choose your spots I remember this was a good trade then we did another you know quick little trade here and uh, now perhaps uh, it's starting to push a little bit higher inch by inch um, LinkedIn um, got back in this towards the end of the day uh, it's still hanging in there you know it's definitely not a blockbuster it's like you know possibly sleeping <laughs> but this was your day one and then remember it gapped up here above uh, this and went sideways gave you a small push and all of a sudden you know it's hugging into uh, you know into into this spot again so for me I know you know, unfortunately, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a momentum monkey, and I would be buying 219.64 for a push. Get it? I, I could call myself that because I know that we do like to buy things high and sell things higher when there's volume and it goes quick. Unfortunately, that's not a lot of that in the market anymore. But so instead of being, you know, the, the guy holding the banana, I'm like, all right, you're right, guys, because people are pointing on the VTF. Look at the chart. I'll buy a little bit back. Go back to the chart of, of LinkedIn here because still 217 and change two and a half dollars cheaper than this so if I could own it here and then it starts to go through there you know you have some room and then you could sell into the gap if that's where it wants to go um, still above the eight day it's you know held the gap and you know it's something to do in here you know again it's not a the best trend out there and um, but if again if you didn't take it into earnings which we don't do here you missed a, a $50 discount so perhaps you get a a little bit of a pushback we, sh we shall see Tesla um, held the, the eight day moving average, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the 21 day here, and then turned up a little bit today. Um, you know, this is a B play at best. Um, it's hard to get momentum and tried here, failed, maybe needed a little time to regroup and could be on its way uh, tomorrow. We shall see. At least it's calculated. Um, Mobileye, a lot of guys tried to push or, or position into it yesterday. Unfortunately, I missed it. And this stock was really good to us uh, last week. You had your one buy here, your inside day, and then this is where most of us added to it. I sold it on this day. 
So I, what I should have done is I sold it there. I should have bought back the 8-day, which I didn't. So maybe now with this high-level flag, uh, with an inside day, perhaps you get a, another nice trade above this because I do think at some point this mobilize is going to be back at the highs of the year. It's, you know, it's basically the driverless cars and the place to be, the, the new age technology that everyone's talking about. Um, well, how did Amber close? Let's check it out. I lost money here today. Um, look at the size of this move and then parabolic. So a lot of guys were trying to short this um, today. Um, I joined them. I thought maybe they were, they were showing a little relative weakness in the morning. I shorted like 216.50s. I added a 216. think it would be, I'm sorry, 116 that would break the low. It didn't. And then I got I covered because now it looks like just another high level flag, a little extended from the eight day, but I'm not fighting that trend. So covered it, lost a little bit, you know, moved on. Could have been could have been a cutie. You know, I call that a cute short, which means trying to find the counter trend trade against a very strong trend, which a cute trade like that could make you ugly if you don't have a set of rules and you stay with it if it goes higher. Because I'm sure a lot of people tried a cute trade here, didn't work. Maybe in here, didn't work. At some point maybe it works, but I would just wait until you get a clear-cut signal, which you don't have yet. Um, look at Goldman Sachs. Talked about this in the morning call. Held above the prior low. Turned up. JP Morgan. These are bright spots. Turned up right near the highs. What did Morgan do? Turned up. Almost back at highs. Citigroup. Turned up. Following the 8-day, above the 21-day. So, I know there's a lot of people complaining out there, and, and I tend to do it from time to time as well because volume's low. Follow through is low, but you know every day there's some things to do. And if you stay very concise on your game plan and stick to the things you want to do and not get distracted on things that happen in the market that just might not be worth your time, you know, you'll be a little bit better off. If you come in with game plans with pivots and, and levels and know where the fighting area is between the, the bulls and the bears, and if the bulls win, where it could go, and if the bears win, where that can go, and it'll give you a little bit of a roadmap on how to participate and what tiers to use. And that's how you, you stay sane in this market because I see a lot of people losing their sanity because, again, lack of follow through, lack of volume, lack of um, conviction. And with that being said, you try and make your own, you get the happy fingers and wind up buying more than you need to buy or short more than you think you should be short. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm down a real number and I did nothing today. So when that's the case, that's when you have to have more discipline, not less. And uh, tomorrow's Fed Day, we'll see what happens. Let's see, maybe we get a, you know, a Fed that tells us uh, September-ish, but not in a rush. And the you know, economy is somewhat normal with some overseas risks. And, and then maybe we'll get a little bit more clarity and more continuity. But if not, just keep your control. You know, have, <laughs> have what's it called, some hobbies over the summer. You know, half the time when I leave 1130, I'll have a few positions on. I'll put some stops in, and either the stocks are going to work that I'm in, whether I'm here between 11.30 and 2, or it's going to break the level that I don't think it should. I get out, and they're just leftover trades anyway. You know, for every trade I miss because of news or this and that, maybe one out of four days that happens, I keep my sanity for the other four days when I don't miss anything. So <laughs> you should probably think of doing the same, especially considering it's June. And unless we get some kind of crazy corrective action and some kind of volatility, I don't think much is going to change over, you know, June, July, and August. And that means things are going to slow down even more. People are going to be going on vacations and less volume. So you need to have a few hobbies and, and, and be gone midday and expect a little less during the first 90 minutes. If you get something more than you expected, take it. You know, come back, position perhaps in the last hour, see what goes on. And, and that's how you navigate the summer. You don't push the envelope. You don't get overly frustrated. You don't try and generate money because your nut is bigger than the market's giving you because all that could do is take it away and make you owe more and the nut will still be staring you in the face. And, uh, and that's that. See you tomorrow at the morning call. Have a great night.